to like take a breather. And you talk about putting the time in. Yeah, it's taking him two hours and 45 minutes, but it's not really respectful of your audience, in my opinion, to just lay all that, all those words on uh-huh. them. Let's just put it like that. So what can people do to be better at brevity? Well, you know, kind of crossing between the stand-up and the podcasting stuff, got my foot in the door there. What I've learned with the podcast is, you know, we spend a little bit of time before the show, and we talk about what we're not going to talk about. Because it's really easy to go off on tangents, especially when you're talking about comedy. There's a million things that can come up. But we try to have a specific takeaway and something that the comics that are listening, we have a lot of new comics. People have also been doing it for 20 years that listen. We're fortunate that way. But we want to make sure we hit something for both of those targets in that time so they can walk away that night after getting on stage and, and do something different. So narrowing it down to what they need to focus on helps us focus. And we can always you know, table the other ones for another podcast. Well, with that said, though, you can't please everybody all the time. So how do you decide when you're building an audience, when you're trying to be not necessarily a comic, but again, bloggers, podcasters, authors, how do you decide who your audience is and how you're going to target them? It's interesting because we're trying to, we're figuring out who ours are by, I mean, one thing we look at is what episodes they download. And so those are hot topics. And, and for us, you know, 26 episodes in, we've, we've tried a, a variety of approaches from interviews to straight ahead, just me on the mic to the banter between me and Gavin, who's a new comedian, so he has that perspective. But we look at, you know, looking at what we've done so far, they're really interested in anything when we talk about money, and they're extremely interested in writing. We've had some, what I call, extremely light podcasts, like around the holidays, we did a best travel apps for comedians kind of thing. Not nearly as many downloads, less than half of what we normally got. And we kind of expected that. But we're coming Mm -hmm. right back hard with the writing. So I think we're going to really key in on the newer comic writing techniques and focus on that and then have some ancillary podcasts for the more established comics. Let's talk about Gavin because I think that brings up a good point Mm -hmm. that even if you are a brand new beginner, you've got something to say, you've got something of value, especially if you're going to team up with somebody more experienced like you are. Yeah. We call it the 23 years versus 23 weeks. Like he's got, that's (laughs) that's his perspective (laughs) Yeah, and and it's, it's mine and he's great at, at slowing me down when I've glossed over a term or something that I assume everybody knows and they'll say, well, 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 what do you mean by a door deal? I don't, I don't think I understand what that is. What, what is that for the new listener or the new comic? So we get plenty of reviews coming in that say, you know, whatever you do, keep Gavin because he's our voice. And the way you guide him, we feel like we've got a mentor right there in, in the phone. So it's, it's been pretty cool. I've looked at a lot of these guys that make a lot of money online. And sometimes it's frustrating because you're like, what the hell? What the? They're brand new and they're making tons of cash online. But that's exactly what it is. They're so new. Uh-huh. They understand how a beginner thinks, and they can communicate to those beginners. It's easy to lose that. It is. I wonder about that with comics, too. Let's take a Chris Rock, for example. The guy's rich. How does he relate to just the Joe Sixpack in the club? How do you do it? Well, I do it because I'm not rich. <laughs> <laughs> so it's easier for me. But here's what happens with, I think, comics at, at Chris's level, which is as high as you can get. I mean, there's maybe 15 or 20 guys or gals that are in that extreme tier. It's how do you, and I even think I heard Chris Rock say this in an interview. It's like for me going on stage, it's almost diminishing returns because people saw that one special and that's always going to be their favorite special. It's almost impossible to top somebody's best version of you. And so yep. for him, I know he's he's crossed over into the movie thing and he's wrote produced and directed that last one, Take 5. But when it gets back to his stand-up, he's trying to find new places to go with things. So that's always a challenge for a comic. And can you explain what goes into, let's say, a Chris Rock special? Because I know there's a ton of work. He makes it look so easy. But let's talk about the 23 hours right there. Yeah, so Chris, uh, and even before he got super big, he had a few guys that he would travel with, and they would be his writers, and you know they would do their stand-up to warm up the crowd. Then he would do the material that they were working on, they would watch his show and give him some feedback, and then they would meet up again the next morning or what afternoon, tweak it some, and they would do clubs. You know, you might catch him at the D.C. Improv or passing through somewhere kind of unannounced so he can kind of get in and get out. But you're doing that for a good year, year and a half when you're preparing for like an HBO special or something. So there's a lot of work that goes into it. And it's not uncommon if you're at like the Improv in Los Angeles or New York, you'll see sometimes they'll bump an amateur comic oh, and yeah. bring in like Jerry Seinfeld, for example. It's like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. You guys sit in the back of the room and. Yeah. And they don't announce it because he probably doesn't want Jerry Seinfeld fans there because 
he wants to be able to make mistakes. Right. And that's a, another thing now. And, you know, Patton Oswalt has blogged about it and posted about it on YouTube. But when he's trying out new material, and most comics feel this way, if you're at that level where people are coming to see you, they've got their phones out recording you and you can't make any mistakes because they're going to put that version of that joke, which is brand new on online. Ruins it. It ruins it. Yeah. And so it's really, a, it's a tough thing. I mean, comics will work through it and we'll figure it out, but it's a new dimension that we've got to deal with. I saw Chris Rock give an interview recently. He hosted Saturday Night Live, and I think I sent it to you. He was talking about not doing colleges anymore uh -huh. because the students are so conservative, they can't take a joke. And he got a lot of heat on Saturday Night Live for talking about 9-11 and some of these sacred cows, which, you know, I understand why people would be frustrated, but at the same time, laughter is healing. We talked about that at the very beginning. I love your perspective on that. Are there some topics that you shouldn't touch? What's your advice for somebody who wants to kind of push that edge, not necessarily in comedy, but maybe in the podcast even? You know, I watched the Saturday Night Live thing that he, you know, he did the opening monologue. And so he talked about the World Trade Center. He talked about the Boston Marathon bombings. There may have been one other topic in there that was pretty, pretty touchy. But the tricky thing for comics is if the crowd will just get past the setup of the joke and listen to the punchline, they'll realize you're not making fun of the people that were victims in those situations you're making fun of the bomber or you're making fun of the situation and what chris did in both of those is what every comic should aspire to and every podcaster is put yourself in that position and, and how would you deal with it because i think your fans the people that are listening to you and dialing in or buying your books they want to know what your perspective is you're the one they're tuned into so for chris he was like uh the world trade center they rebuilt it in the same spot <laughs> you got to be crazy. First off, to go in there, I'm not going to go up to the top of the rest. Nobody's you know. going in there. And second off, who's going to put their office in there? Target? You know? <laughs> so he's making fun of the fact that somebody has to go in there, not the fact that we yeah, were, you know. Yeah. And it, with the Boston Marathon, I think the take was, can you imagine running 25 miles and all of a sudden a bomb goes off and you got to run faster than you planned <laughs> on it? You know? So he put him, he's like, not me. I'm like, I'm out of here. So he's putting himself in the joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a scenario that he wasn't in. And that's how a comic finds their perspective. I think it's refreshing. One of the things I like about comics is they do push the boundaries. A lot of what we consider community standards now, it's because comics are constantly pushing the level. And it's not just comics. It's Madonna. Sure. It's everybody who pushes it. It's Britney. Who knows who it is? I mean, it's people we pay attention to. Kim Kardashian, maybe. Maybe she's doing some kind of legitimate. She's pushing something. <laughs> she's doing some legitimate work now. I think that there's a lot of good for that, but I think there are people that are afraid of criticism. And I think you've hit on it here in this interview that there are going to be some people that like you and some people that don't. And I think you've got to play to the people that like you. You know there's going to be the trolls and whatever out there. I'll mess up this, mess up this quote just a little bit, but I saw Ricky Gervais tweeted something recently because they were asking him about that. You know, your last movie was this flop or whatever. How do you feel about it? And he's like, it's better to create something and have other people criticize it then criticize other people and not create anything. Yeah. So let that yeah. soak in. You're creating a podcast. You're putting your voice, your time, your effort, your monetary resources behind it. Some people are going to criticize it, and that's the easiest possible thing to do. But those people will fade away, especially if you don't shine any light on them. Just let it bounce off and move on. When you talked about changes happening for comics with people videotaping the joke and putting it online, that's the bad thing about the Internet, too, is that it's given everybody a voice to criticize. Exactly. All the one-star reviews, all the anonymous Yelp reviews, all the Facebook messages. It can be tough. Yeah. Because now you get to see that people hate you. Well, think about this. Even uh, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, high-end restaurant, food's great, small portions, but it's good food. <laughs> Do you think they go through a week where somebody doesn't complain about something? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When the expectations are set high, people are going to try to knock you down. You should set your expectations high for yourself and all the work that you do, all the books that you write, all the podcasts you put out. And it's easy for somebody to take a swipe at that. But again, realize they're not bringing anything to the table. So don't even, don't even acknowledge them. I had a buddy of mine, music business guy, contracted Lyme disease. And this guy's like tired and he's sleeping. He's got all this stuff going on. And I don't know if Lyme disease kills anybody, but it sounded like he was kind of wishing he was dead at this point. Yeah. And I said, you know, and you still move forward. You're still working with this thing. He said, I'm not going to let Lyme disease stop me. Right. And I think it's that same attitude that you're talking about. Yeah. I'm not going to let these people stop you. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest. The first few times we got some negative stuff back, 
all you got to do is we post on Facebook groups to different comics across the country. You know, almost every major city has a Facebook comedy group, and I asked permission to post my podcast on there, and I think 95% said yeah, and we get some feedback from them. The couple of little pockets of the country where we got negative feedback, you know, you hit that person's profile, and it's somebody that's working at Denny's and hates their life, and they're just looking for something to slam. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and the thing is, the other, I'll just throw this in here too. One of the one of the cities where, you know, I'd posted a few things, and somebody commented like, hey, six weeks in a row, nobody's liked your post. I appreciate your uh, persistence. I've had two people from that exact city sign on for my online comedy class. Yeah. So they're not in there, you know, giving me likes. They're actually going to my product and, and buying it. So Yeah. Well, how much is a like worth? Zero. Right. How much is getting a client worth, getting a gig worth, selling a book worth? It's a lot. Hey, let's talk about that writing class because we've kind of hinted at it about what Chris Rock goes through, the importance of brevity. This is going to help any podcast. It's going to help any book. How many long-winded books have oh, you yeah. read? Way too many. It's going to help you get to the meat. People are going to connect with you a whole lot better. So you've got a great school. Can I call it a school? What the yeah. hell? Schooloflaughs.com. Right. You're going to learn more about making a living and brevity than you would in a real school. And you've got some great writing stuff, and not just for people in Nashville, but anybody online can do this. If you're curious about comedy or the writing or any of that stuff, I check out schooloflaughs.com. I do a, a blog post every Tuesday or Wednesday. Podcast comes out every Friday. So find a few topics in there that you like, read about it, listen to the podcast. And if you like what you're hearing and you, and you kind of like my style of delivery and teaching, there's an online writing class that I'm teaching. Them, and we've got people in six different countries taking it now. And it's it's bite-sized pieces. There's, it's a 34 different little videos with a workbook, over a 100-page workbook, to help you generate material and how you can start looking at different topics in the way that a comedian looks at it. If you're good at getting a laugh in one certain way, but you know you've got more in you, it's probably because you're only utilizing one technique. And we talk about 12 or 13 different techniques in that online class. There's different tiers depending on how much you want to get involved with it. It's very thorough. It's, it's a version of a class that I've taught here in Nashville for 12 years. And that's the one that I've been to, and I can say it's extremely helpful. I came in there as a marketing guy, but just that, that brevity. If you do nothing else but learn how to edit yourself and get to the, as you say, laughs per minute, but get to the point per minute, get to the sales pitch per minute, get to whatever it is, put more of that in there per minute, it's going to help you. Even like a personal ad. You got sure. 20 words or less in the little ad in the back of the paper. Well, you got to get to the meat, man. You only got 20 words. That's right. Twitter? Twitter. Twitter per minute. Yeah. So schooloflaughs.com. I'm going to have Rick back, and when he comes back, I'm going to talk to him about improv. That's going to be on Red Podcast 112, so look for that episode, redpodcast.com slash 112. Rick, thanks for being here. Check out School of Laughs. It's a great podcast. It's a great site. If you've got questions or comments, check me out online. Redpodcast.com is where to get in touch. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. You've been listening to Red Podcast, real entrepreneur development. Subscribe today using iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS at redpodcast.com.